Hi, Sam here with jbugs.com. We're in the midst of disassembling our 1971 Eurolux Superwheel to get it ready for bodywork. And on our last video, we pulled the original front fenders and test fit some aftermarket replacements. For the rear of the car, since we plan on reusing the original rear fenders and deck lid, all we'll be doing is pulling the parts off. Since we'll also be removing the running boards, we start by jacking up the sides of the car and setting the front and the rear on jack stands. We pull off the rear wheels and we'll note again, take pictures of any of the wires or other parts you aren't completely familiar with to make assembly easier in the future. Also, save all the hardware if you removed and whenever possible, attach the hardware back to whichever part it belongs to. Another tip for removing parts in the exterior of the car is to spray penetrating oil on all the hardware you'll be removing a day or two before. It'll make removing the hardware much easier. We start at the back of the running board and remove the bolt that attaches the running board to the rear fender. Then the four bolts underneath the running board are unthreaded and the running board is removed to reveal a relatively solid heater channel. There is some rust at the quarter panel that will have to be cut out and patched out, but at least this heater channel doesn't need to be replaced. The opposite side running board is removed and reveals a number of holes and rust throughout. This heater channel could be possibly patched, but the right way to repair this much rust will be replacing the heater channel completely. Do you want to see a video on that? Answer in the comments below. The rear fender tie down begins by removing the taillight lens and the bulb holder so we can disconnect the taillight wires. The wires are pushed through the fender and the two taillight and housing nuts on the bottom side are unthreaded and the housing is removed. The bumper bracket bolts are unbolted from the body and the rear bumper is removed. All the fender bolts are unthreaded and the fender is removed from the car. There's minimal damage to the fender and other than a few small cracks at the bottom, the fender is in great shape. So we'll repair the cracks, do the necessary bodywork, and we're definitely going to be reusing this fender. The opposite side fender is removed in the same manner, and all goes well other than the very last body nut at the apron, which spun loose while the bolt was being removed. We continue the teardown at the rear of the car with the deck lid open, so we can remove the license light lens and the bulb holder and its wiring. The three nuts on the bottom side of the license light holder are unthreaded, and the holder is removed. The deck lid emblem is gently pried up from the deck lid and all three clips, and it's in good enough shape to be reused. The deck lid latch is removed by unthreading the three screws, and then we remove the two bolts at either deck lid hinge. The safest way to pull the deck lid is by holding it firmly at either side, and then rotating it to one side to release the spring tension. The bolts for both deck lid brackets are unthreaded, so the brackets and the nut plates can be removed. Then at the left side of the engine compartment, the emissions diaphragm is removed, and the numerous metal tabs that hold the engine firewall tarboard in place are straightened with a pair of side cutters and a flat blade screwdriver. Once all the tabs are straightened out, the rear tarboard is removed along with some of the wiring. Most of the remaining wires in the engine compartment are pulled out and cut away from the car since we'll be replacing it all after the car is painted. The right side tarboard had already been removed, so we could access the wires that would go behind it. The body tabs for the left side are pried up so we can remove the left side tarboard, and we continue removing and cutting back the wires down to the main harness itself. We will leave this section of wiring as we'll use it to pull the new harness through the body later. And with that, the rear teardown of our Beetle is fairly complete. In our next few videos, the teardown will continue where we'll cover tearing down the interior and removing the dash and all of its components. Then we'll get into the trunk and continue cleaning and disassembling the car down to the bare body before we finally pull the body off the chassis. Thanks for watching. Make sure to click the like button below and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And as always, when you need parts or accessories for your vintage Volkswagen, head over to jbugs.com.